Hello and welcome to a screencast where we're going to give an overview of Microserver. Microserver is a plugin system for Spring and Spring Boot. And it's primarily a plugin system for building REST based microservices. Now your microservices may not intercommunicate themselves using REST endpoints, but we find that it's always useful to have a facility to create REST endpoints so that you can introspect your services. So you can create a REST M, uh, service microservice in microserver with a single line of code. So in this example, we're creating a microserver application with a context simple app with a one-liner new microserver app, passing the context and then called run. And we started this up, and if we browse, we should be able to hit the waddle in our browser, and then we can see we have a microservice up and running with no REST endpoints. So maybe to start out, we can add in a REST endpoint into our service. See what that looks like. We'll stop our service now and drop in our REST endpoint. We add in a REST annotation and a path annotation. These are mostly JAXRS annotations. REST is unique to microserver. I can open up that now in a second and show what that looks like and why we have that. I'll we'll start the application first. So I click into REST. The REST annotation is used in microserver to annotate spring beans that we would like to be. Um, REST endpoints. You'll notice here that REST builds on top of the spring annotation for component and we can define these either as singleton types which is not the default um, in microserver but is in JAXRS or as prototype beans. In this case we'll actually use the spring bean as configured. Okay so once our service is back up and running with a new endpoint in place if we call in and hit the waddle we can see that our endpoint has been added in and then hopefully if we try and hit it directly We'll get okay back which is as we expected and you can go ahead and build up a microservice application in this form if you so wish i take a show you the build file for this so we're using the grizzly and jersey plugin here which means that we have an embedded version of grizzly an embedded web server and we're using jersey as a JAXRS um, supplier so this may give a hint the microserver itself is pretty abstract. Microserver core doesn't provide any of this functionality at all. Everything within microserver builds on top of microserver core as a plugin. So one of the plugins is to plug in the Grizzly web server or the Gr Jersey JAXRS provider. But we can add more plugins than just Grizzly and Jersey. So let's add in the Micro Machine Stats plugin. And when we do that, we'll need to refresh Gradle. We just simply add it as a dependency and then restart our application and we'll get the machine stats functionality added in to our microservice. So what the machine stats functionality is, or plugin is, it's a plugin that adds the cigar library and it does all this auto install for cigar because it, it uses native libraries and it links those in automatically for you. And then adds REST endpoints to your microservice so it allows other services to query your micro your microservice to get some information on its current load, be it memory or CPU. So with the service started up, we can go back and we can hit our application model and we can see that we've got our machine stats endpoint added in absolutely for free. Now we can hit that and there we get back the current stats of this server. So we can see our memory usage, CPU usage and that type of thing. And this can be useful for things like if you want to build a smart load balancing client, which is exactly why we created this particular microservice uh, plugin. So I'll stop our service and we can go back and add in another plugin. And this is generally the way we do development in microserver. The way we use it ourselves is to, to abstract as much infrastructure logic into plugins as possible and then leave our services solely responsible for business logic. So in this case, we're adding in an application registry or service registry plugin. Once that's Gradle is updated and added it in, we can restart our application and take a look. Actually, before we restart, there's really some configuration that we should add here. So, so far, the configuration that we've added is to tell microserver that this class is a REST class, a REST endpoint, and to add a path to that. We can use the microserver annotation to add in some properties. Now, typically in a microserver application in production, you'll use a properties file. A microserver has a few idioms for picking those up automatically. But at this stage of development, you may want to just inject properties directly. And the microserver annotation provides a useful way to do that. So in our application registry plugin, it, what happens here is that it both allows any microservice to add in as a service registry itself or act as a service registry itself, but also allows any microserver uh, service that is 
got this plugin installed to send its details out to another um, service registry instance. So we're going to tell it what the service registry URL is, and in this case, as we only have one service, it's going to be ourselves. So that's what this configuration does. Service registry URL, localhost 8080, simple app. Okay, so let's start our service and then we'll see what happens. So we just wait on our server to start up again and we we'll switch back into the browser view. Now we, sh we can go back to our application model, our new services endpoint, we've got our service registry endpoint. So we can hit our service registry and then we can go hit the list endpoint. So the list endpoint shows us the current registered services. Each service will register itself by default every five minutes, which allows you to get some idea of the freshness and the current availability of the server at a, at a, at a very high level. That's configurable. You can have them register themselves much more frequently should you so wish. So in order to trigger a service event, we can use curl and we can hit the service registry schedule endpoint and then that will cause our current service to go and send out a ping alert to the service registry instance that's reg that is configured to hit which is itself again we send the curl in we've got a success status back so the, the status ping has been sent and then when we go back to our service registry and hit list now we get this service registered within the service registry already so this is a brief overview of microserver and how to use it. Generally, what we like to do is keep our service classes very, very small. Microservices, two or three classes, a couple of hundred lines of code at maximum. Keep things as small as possible. And any common logic, rather than creating a common jar, is to abstract them out into these um, plug-in libraries that, then, that you then import as dependencies as and where you need them. Well, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of Microserver.